I'm going to be talking about the special use or scenario specific heroes. We have Dipper. He's a seven threat lore hero. Two, one, two, three, dwarf, action. Pay one resource from a hero's resource pool to add one resource to Biffer's resource pool. Any player may trigger this ability. Limit once per round. So with his ability, it's like you have two lore heroes. You can get two resources. If you have unwanted resources from heroes you control, you can give them over to Bipper. Or if other players have extra resources that they don't need, they can give them to you. It makes playing a multi-spear deck easier because it's got resource smoothing. And this is the hero I use in my Ent deck. Because I play with Faramir. That's a leadership hero. And the only reason why I have Faramir in the Ent deck is because of its ability that when you engage an enemy, you ready an ally you control. So his leadership resources I can every turn I can give to Biffer. He also has decent willpower of two and decent cost of seven. So he's a good hero to put in if you already have two heroes that you need and you're wanting to keep your threat low and have a lore hero. We got Damrod, the nine threat lore hero. Two, two, one, four. Gondor Ranger. Reduce the cost of the first trap card you play each round by one to a minimum of zero. Response. After a trap card you control is attached to an enemy, draw a card. So this only is useful in trap decks. You can play traps at cheaper cost and draw cards once the enemy gets trapped. And he has decent willpower and attack. But outside of a trap deck, you can find better heroes For the cost. We got Denisaur. He's an eight threat lore hero. One one three three. Gondor Noble Steward. Action. Exhaust Denisaur to look at the top card of the encounter deck. You may move that card to the bottom of the deck. So when you're playing solo, he's perfect at deck scrying. Because you can look at, exhaust him to look at the top card, know what you're going to be questing against, and if you don't like that card, you can put it to the bottom of the deck. So he's a perfect solo hero with good defense. 
of 3 And if you put the Gondorian shield on him, he's all of a sudden he's got five defense. And with an unexpected courage, you can use his ability and then ready him and have five defense and defend a large amount of enemies. So he's another good Splash hero. And we've got Argolad. A nine threat lore hero. Two, two, one, four. Sylvan scout. Ranged. Action. Exhaust Argolad to choose an enemy in the staging area. That enemy gets minus X threat, where X is Argolad's attack. If this effect reduces the enemy's threat to zero, deal one damage to it. Limit once per round. So if you build up Argolad's attack he can be ready and if you need to reduce the threat in the staging area he can reduce the enemies and deal damage to them if his threat is equal to or higher so he works good in a direct damage deck And if there's no enemies in the staging area, you can be ready for attacking. Now we got Thalon, a nine threat tactics hero. One, two, two, four, dwarf warrior. Well, Thalon is committed to a quest, deal one damage to each enemy as revealed by the encounter deck. So this is a, one of my favorite cards when I'm playing against a deck that has low hit point enemies. In the Dwarf Elf cycle, almost all enemies have two hit points. And enemies that only have one hit point are immediately destroyed. And cards like the crows that have surge Crows are destroyed before the surge triggers. So the enemies with one hit point, they're revealed, they get dealt one damage. And then here's the staple to have with them, the Gondorian Spearman. So the enemy engages you. You declare the Spearman as a defender. It's got a response that after Gondorian Spearman is declared as a defender, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. So you deal one damage to the attacking enemy and it's destroyed before it can do any damage to you. And if it has three hit points, if you have a Spear of a Citadel, you can attach that to him, and then he deals two direct damage back. 
So these work perfectly in decks that have lots of enemies with low hit points. And I would put it in as a staple in one of those decks. You also, if you have Dane on the board, you would be questing for two, attacking for three, and if you're doing battle questing, he's questing for three. So he's also good in direct damage decks. Then we have Bilbo Baggins, a nine threat tactics hero, one, one, two, two, Hobbit Burglar. Response, after Bilbo Baggins commits to the quest, choose an enemy in the staging area until the end of the phase Bilbo Baggins gets plus X willpower or X of the enemy's threat. If the player's quest successfully, deal one damage to that enemy. Two damage instead if it's guarding a card. So if you like playing guarded cards, you'll be able to deal extra damage to the enemy if it's guarded by an enemy. And this eliminates the threat of any enemy in the staging area that's in the staging area when Bilbo commits to a quest. It won't target enemies that are revealed during the questing phase because Bilbo have already com committed. There is cards that you could use to attach to Bilbo like the Hobbit Pony that you can not quest with Bilbo and then exhaust the Hobbit Pony to commit him to the quest after the cards have been revealed then you could target the enemies that have been revealed. But where I find him the most useful is playing She Loves Lair in the Hobbit in the Lord of the Rings saga. Because he can deal one damage to her every time he quests successfully. So even if you're troubled and you have to keep putting resources on her every turn to keep her from attacking. Once you get to the point where when you deal damage to her, remove a resource, Bilbo could help reduce resources and she gets plus one threat for each resource on her. So you could just ignore that with Bilbo because Bilbo will reduce all the threat. So another hero that's good in direct damage. Now we have Bard, Grandson of Bane, a 10 threat tactic zero, 2 3, 2 3, Dale ranged. Response After Brand, Son of Bane, attacks and defeats an enemy engaged with another player. Choose and ready one of that player's characters. So if you're playing solo, you can find a lot better heroes to play with. But if you're playing multiplayer, it can be one of the best heroes at cleaning the board every turn if you have if the other player has Mary because Mary has a response that after Mary participates in an attack that destroys an enemy ready another character that participates in that attack so you have Bardon for one player and Mary for another, 
you attack with Bran and Mary, destroy the character. Mary readies up Bran, and Bran readies up Mary, and you do the process all over again until all the enemies and engage with them are destroyed. As long as you have attack strong enough to kill all those enemies. So that's a pair that can just wipe the board in a two-player game. And it works even better if you can put a Dunedain cache onto Mary that gives Mary ranged. So then you could sweep the whole board except for enemies engaged with you. We have Dune here, an eight threat spirit hero, one, two, one, four. Dune here gets, can target enemies in the staging area when he attacks alone. When doing so, he gets plus one attack. So if you are able to keep enemies in the staging area, he can attack and destroy them. So one way to do that is to start with low threat. Another way to do it is if you have the hero fast red. Fast red has three defense. And a response that after faster it defends an enemy attack, return it to the staging area and reduce your threat by two. So these two as a pair, you could block with faster it, reduce your threat by two, send it back to the staging area, and then attack with done here with his extra attack to hope destroy the enemy in the staging area. So he's a good way to attack enemies. In decks that have higher engagement cost enemies. Or ability, ways to send the enemy back to the staging area. Another card that's useful that you can play on him is the Spear of the Mark. Attached to a Rohan character, restricted. Attached character gets plus one attack and plus two attack instead of attacking an enemy in the staging area. So all of a sudden he's attacking for five into the staging area. 
And if he had two spears on him, he could be attacking for seven. And that's enough to destroy most enemies. And you could also play Firefoot. He would get plus one attack, and then he would be able to trample enemies that are engaged with you. So he's a good hero to have, and if you have low threat, or you're doing a stage attack deck. And we have Seodrid, an 8 threat leadership hero. Two, one, two, one, four, noble Rohan warrior. Response. After Theodred commits to a quest, choose a hero committed to that quest. Add one resource to that hero's resource pool. So if you're the first player, you can only attach, give it to heroes you've committed to the quest because the other players have not committed their players to the quest yet. And he works perfectly with a team with Leadership Aragorn. Because Leadership Aragorn has the ability, after Aragorn commits to a quest, spend one resource from his resource pool to ready him. So you could commit Aragorn to the quest, and Theodrid to the quest, give the resource to Aragorn, and then you could ready up Aragorn using that resource, because you can choose the order in which those responses go off. And he's also just a good hero to spread resources around the table. You have Dwalin, a nine threat spirit hero, a one, two, two, four dwarf response. After Dwalin attacks and destroys an orc enemy, lower your threat by two. So he's a staple in decks that there's lots of orcs. Because his threat, his ability is not limited. So every time you destroy an orc, you can lower your threat by two. So he's a good hero to have in the Dwarf Elf cycle, where the, all the enemies are mostly orcs. And if you put two Dwarven axes on them, he's attacking for six. And if Dane's on the table, he'd be attacking for seven. So you'd be able to destroy almost every orc enemy in the Dwarf Elf cycle. And you give him unexpected courage. And you've got your threat reduction. Then we got... Eleanor, she's a seven threat spirit hero, one, one, two, three, Gondor Noble, response, exhaust Eleanor to cancel the wind revealed effects of a treachery card, just revealed by the encounter deck, then discard that card and replace it with the next card from the encounter deck. So she's a good hero to have in quests where there is a encounter card that could ruin the game. You could keep her ready and just use her for whenever that comes out. But one thing you need to remember is she only cancels the effects of a treachery card. 
So the winner you be able to affect on a location or an enemy, you're not able to cancel. And also, you have to reveal another encounter card. I make a Balan. He's a nine threat leadership hero. Two, one, two, four, dwarf response. Pay one resource from Balan's resource pool to cancel a shadow effect just triggered during an attack. Then deal the attacking enemy another shadow card. Limit once per attack. So if you're playing in quests that have bad shadow effects, you could at least have one more chance to try to get rid of a nasty shadow effect. So you should always keep at least one resource on them to help cancel shadow effects. And if you don't use his ability, he's good at Questing and defending because you don't need to have him ready to use his ability. So you can quest with him or defend and still use his ability. And then the last hero is Glowin. A nine threat leadership hero. Two, two, one, four, Dwarf Noble. Response. After Glowin suffers damage, add one resource to his resource pool for each point of damage just suffered. So he's a way to build up resources. And similar to Gimli's effect, where Gimli gets plus one attack, for each damage on him, Glowin gets plus one resource when he's for each damage dealt to him. And he works good when you have Elmrond on the table because you can heal him. If you have a self-preservation that heals two damage from a hero, Elrond would make that three. So you could take archery of three or attack a block a enemy with four attack. Glowin's dealt three damage. Then you exhaust self-preservation to heal that damage up. And you get Three, resor three resources, but you can't use an honor guard that you exhaust to cancel the damage because Gimli Glowin has to take the damage to be able to get the resource. So there's the last hero. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed hearing about all these heroes and that'll inspire you to play with any of the heroes not just the top tier or second tier but all heroes in the card pool have a great day